Hey everyone, it's Mike. This week on the episode, Gary and I are going to be talking about my recent trip up to Disney's Animal Kingdom Park to attend Moonlight Magic. I was invited by listener Ken Cabot and I joined him and his wife for the evening. Is Moonlight Magic worth planning a trip around or is it highly overrated? We will dive into it. Now roll the intro music. Welcome, foolish mortals. Time to be turning around. Cause this here's the wildest ride in the wilderness! Hey, Henry, what's holding you up? Let's get on with the show. We can't hang around here all day. Ladies and gents, this is the moment you've waited for. There's no turning back now. This is the greatest show! It's time for the WDW Beyond the Gates podcast with your hosts, Michael Hurley and Gary Aruda. That's right. This is the WDW Beyond the Gates podcast, episode number 526, recorded from the Defont Leroy Studios in Kent County, Rhode Island, in sunny southwest Florida. I'm your host, Gary. Joined as always by my co-host and my cousin Mike down in Florida. How are you doing today, Michael? Oh, I'm doing fabulous. Yeah, what's new with you? Not much. No? How's the life? You've been busy putting some miles on the car, huh? Yeah. I almost doubled them. I still That's have about say- three thousand miles on that bad boy. There you go. It's beautiful. Up on property. You played golf too. Uh, how's that for a sad day? Oh, you're busy. Go play the sad day game. I didn't eat with the boys, but we finished a little early. So I uh, sat with them and finished up my water and talked to them for a while. And then when their entrees came, I took off, went home, filled up the waters in the Gatorade, and loaded right up back, our bro. travel yeah. bag, and headed right back up. Nice. It's beautiful. I got out and played some golf today, parts. Oh, who'd you play with? Some uh, work people. There was like a little tournament. It was some place in, uh, like, out near the Cape. Uh, it was kind of a dump, the golf course. I, I wasn't too pleased with it. it it's also it's hard, it's hard when you have, like, when all your friends and family are members at five-star yeah. resort courses. You can't go back to the playing these dumps, can you? I, I, it's the, I don't even care about pub, public's fine. But this was, like, under construction. One of the tees was just all dirt, and they had, like, a mat you had to hit off of. Yeah, no, I can't. You like no, I'm with you. I love Cranston Country Club in Midville, but like when when I used to play Garbage Park, it, I'd rather not play. Yeah. So and it was like 50 degrees, cloudy and windy. So I have like windburn. I'm not sunburn. I'm windburn nice. all over my face. Beautiful, that nice. Like long pants, a hooded sweatshirt. It wasn't an enjoyable experience. I was thinking of you. This guy I know up in Minnesota was playing golf. Yeah, and he posted beautiful day for golf if it weren't for the wind, rain, and cold. <laughs> and I'm like, oh, geez, you got another month, month and a half of this garbage. I know. Oh, at least well, it's gonna... seventy five on Saturday, and then it's gonna be back into the fifties. At least it's May though. They turn the corner. Like May first feels like you're you're getting there. I no, I like, know, I know. I feel like I'm there, but yeah, I, I mean, you know how I got those new wedges at Saturday. Yeah. Bay? Yeah. So the first hole, this is it's like the kind of place. I think there were six par threes on this course. Only fifteen holes were open, so we had to play the same three holes twice. Like your first three <laughs> holes, you played again. <laughs> yeah. And two of them were par three. So the first hole we started on, I'm cold out of the box, haven't had a swing. It's a seventy-two yard island green par three with a downwind, about twenty miles an hour downwind. So I have my brand new 60 degree Vokey. I'm don't, just like, please don't tell me. Don't tell me. The you S did, word. did you? First shot S word. Beep. Did you did, some, didn't you? I hit somebody's like garden. There's like houses around it. It like went over into like the housing complex. That was your first with the new Vokies. With the new Vokey, yeah. With a hoggle rocket. Yeah. Did you stay up? Like, yeah, I got it. I had to run over into the person's yard and grab oh, it. Oh, but you were OB? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah, not a good start. But then I played 
I had a lot of good shots with them later, the Vokies. They did me well today. The 60 degree, I hit it a few times, and I knocked it within like seven, eight feet from 70, 80, 90 yards, so that was good. Started getting getting a little bit better. It had to warm up a little. It's hard. How do they feel, though? They're great. They feel so nice? nice. Yeah, they're very nice. I've always liked Vokies. I never bought new ones. I had like hand me down ones. These are like the first new, like real wedges I've had. It's nice. But other than that, it was pretty much a disaster. Do you do any golf raises? Good roll. Yeah, we had some of those, but we, it's a scramble, four minute scramble. I think the longest putt we made was four feet. That's not, yeah, that's not good playing. That's not good playing in a scramble. Anyway, what are you going to do? What are you going to do? It's good to be out there, I guess. Did you swing hard like you did in the member guest? Yeah, I hit my driver good. Did you? I hit it good, yeah. The first, like, three holes, I didn't hit well, and then after that, I figured it out, and I was hitting it pretty good after that, so. I wasn't too discouraged. Only a couple bad shots. I want to keep getting out there, though. It's tough. Well, you're joining the Sarah Bay, uh, the Detweiler Hurley Thursday Night Golf League, right? That's right. Yeah, I'll come down once. Am I able to play or like once a month? Is that the match? Yeah, we can accommodate. Yeah, we can accommodate. Make it happen. Because Alex yeah. talks all this stuff, but he's. You're going to need fill ins, is what you're, you're saying. You're going to need fill ins. Yeah. So he pulled in a Ruta. He went out first thing in the morning, right? Okay. So I said, What are you abandoning me? He goes, No, this is the time that married guys with infants play. I'm like, Yeah, yeah, I get it. So <laughs> he's on, we're on the par four fourth. Yeah. And he's playing the par three three eighth okay so we're basically he's crossing the bridge and and i had just hit and i was waiting for the other three guys to hit so i went over to see him i said how are things going he's not good parts i'm nine over through seven <laughs> he's a <four laughs> handicap so he texts me at the end of the round he goes he goes it was an even 90 i was home at 10 45 i do not like the new alex <laughs> <laughs> it's tough changing a diaper and, and let's get this day started so it wasn't even about the score. His only score was how quick he could get home. Yeah, for the most part. Yeah, because he likes to sit there, <clears throat> have a soup and a sandwich. Yeah, but not, maybe like not, two or three ultras and and shoot the breeze with the boys. But that 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 ship has sailed. He's got like three years before that's happening again. Oh, and then you know probably going to have another one. That's true. You start staggering them, these little weasels, too. This could be a, he could be in for a real long haul. Then all of a sudden, he creeps up to that above 40. And then, then and then he's like, only hitting it 285. Well, no, I'm saying the membership goes up. And then, it's like, oh, it yeah, really yeah, worth yeah. It? yeah. There's a lot of, a lot of X factors for him. If he's listening, he's in trouble. He, he usually just listens to the first 10 minutes. Oh, perfect. So he's here. And 99% this. of the people just skip the first 10 minutes. So, yeah. Well, we have our target audiences. Speaking of that, we should probably get into the topic at hand, don't you think? Yeah, absolutely. So the the main topic you want to speak of is that you were uh, invited out to a Moonlight Magic event. I was. Now, how did this all come about? Because I didn't even know about it, and then I saw you posted on Facebook that you were there or going. Yeah, I got like a uh, I got a message from Ken that morning. He Ken's said, a long late. time listener, by the way. Yeah, a long time. He told me when we were at the park, he said, I started with triple zero. I said, God bless you. How did he find us? Did he say? I have no idea. I'll have to ask him. We were messaging. I think he's on his way back to New York, but he uh like I like Ken's reached out a bunch. Like I've yeah. emailed back and forth with him. Like I know he's been around since day one. He's been yeah. around forever. Yeah. No, he's he's a great guy, and that that's cool. So he re, he like DM'd you or message. Yeah, you or he yeah he sent me a message on on uh, Facebook, and I said I think I was walking a dog. And I'm like I think I can make it happen. So I asked him what the hours were. Was that like day of or day before? Yeah, no, it was day of. Oh wow! Okay. So I was walking him, and I'm like, you know what? If I if I get him out again at one or two, then he's good to go because then Chris will be home at five at five. So right. You know, it's perfect timing. And he said that they were just chilling at the resort. So they would meet, he would meet me there at 530 because the event starts at seven, but they let you in about three hours early. 
Oh, that's right. Yeah. So I said, you know what? I'm gonna I'm gonna walk in one more time, and then I'll head up and and probably I made. Uh, I didn't even need to make a reservation because I can just jump in at two o'clock anyways. Right. It could have gone regardless. Yeah. So I went up and I just went to Animal Kingdom um, and just did a couple hours by myself. And then we agreed that we we're going to meet around 530 ish. Oh, so then you could check in with them and everything. Yeah, because it, it stinks because we all have to check in together. Right. Because and they were checking people. Ticket. They were checking people in when I was getting there at about four. That so I could have just, tech, you know. If they yeah. made it easier, I could have just gotten my wristband, went in at four, and then didn't have to come back out just to go back in. Right, and just met up with them, but it doesn't work that way. So he's a DVC guy, right? Yeah, he owns Obviously. all at Animal Kingdom. Oh, okay. I was going to say, is that where they were staying on this trip? Yep. yep, they were at Animal Kingdom Lodge, yep. Yeah, that was a, kind of a dumb question, because you have to be DVC to go to Moonlight Magic. Yeah, and you got to be oh. blue card. That's right. Or you have to be hosted by somebody. <laughs> oh, I mean, hosted, so you yeah. could have like you could have technically tried to have gone to this one, right? But you wouldn't yeah. have got in because you weren't staying on property. Correct. Yep. I got gotcha. you. Anyway, so you met up. Did you do anything uh, good in your yeah, first so couple we, hours when you were just hanging out? Yeah. So I got there and I said, "Let me." I looked at the wait times and the, everything was doable. Yeah. So I said, "Yeah, of course." What do you do when you get there? You go do the safari. Sure. Safari was 15 or 20 minutes. So I'm walking, walking, walking. And then they come on and say that there are a bunch of giraffes blocking the pathway. Oh boy. So yeah. things are going to be delayed. So like you're standing there waiting and none of the Jeeps are coming up. Oh, because when look, they block them, who knows? You're at their whim. They don't. You're like at their whim. The way. Yeah. So like you know how they just come one after another. So like they loaded the lightning line and then it was a good 10 minutes before the next one came in to pick us up. So what well, was originally 15 turned into 25 to 30. So that was basically the only thing you got to do. Yeah. At that point. Yep. So I was nervous because it was going to be after the 530. And you know me, I'm never on time. Right. Yeah. I'm even, even if a flight's on time, somehow I show up delayed. <laughs> so I messaged him. I said, I'm getting off the, uh, I'm getting off the safari. He's like, we're just getting on the bus. I'm like, perfect. So I walked to the front and, uh, you know, me being the mayor, I was talking to some lady who was just guiding everybody. She had like the loudspeaker on and was guiding everybody what line to go to. Oh, yeah. Yeah. And she's like, oh, and the people are like, no, we're just going to regular park ticket. She's like, okay, the park closes in seven minutes. And like, that's okay. She just would shake her head. <laughs> So they were coming in with seven minutes. Yeah, they, yeah, yeah, it was like 5.53. In the park Do you think they were trying like, to be weasels and like sneak of in? Of course. To, yeah, that's what it was. Of course, yes. Is that easy? Do you do you feel like it would be easy? No, because you know how they do it for the Christmas parties. They, they're, they're getting you. That's what I thought. It's the same yeah. way, right? They just Oh, yeah, out. yeah. Yeah. Although, technically, if you get in line one minute before closing, True. they don't so maybe they said, Yeah, like, yeah. So like, hey, what the heck? We're not doing anything. Let's just go run over to Flight of Passage and we'll wait two hours. And we'll stand there for two, two hours, hours, right? Right. So whatever. Either way. That is funny, though. <laughs> just shaking her head. Oh, she was just like, you know, because you just work in there and you just get so irritated. Because, I mean, <laughs> they had they had so much signage for, like, where you were supposed to go. Yeah, and then people go, where am I supposed to go? I mean, yeah. there, were just, there were, like, flags. There were welcome <laughs> home signs. I mean, you could not miss it. And people probably missed it still. And people were missing it. Yes, they yeah, were. Sure. <laughs> I guarantee you have, her, you. you have her on a microphone. You had three other guys standing at every single person who walked. <laughs> Hi, you here for this for the special event? Yep. Okay, we're gonna line up over here. Nope. <laughs> Good luck. <laughs> so you got? Did you leave the park to meet up with them and go in together? Because you could check in. In the park, or you could check in at the entry, right? Yeah, so I I just left. I just met him at the entrance. That makes the most I sense. I didn't, go, I didn't go back in to like bag it to to get scanned and everything, but I just met him. You know, once you get through security, when you're off the buses, and you're in that yeah, there's a gap. Odd, yeah, 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 yeah. Well, that makes sense. Now he's got a couple kids too, right? He has a couple kids, but he left them uh, back at the room with babysitter. Oh, really? 
So that's how I was invited. He usually does a couple nights date night, just him and his wife. Oh, so you got to go on the date night. I got to go on the date night. I, yeah. Wow. And I usually invite myself, but I didn't even know about this. Like, I have no yeah. shame. But like, if he said that he scored a V&A at reservation, I would have no problems inviting myself in. Yeah, sure. Of course. Table for three. I mean, I invited myself to Daniel's uh, 1900 Park Fair reservation. Is that happening? Uh, yeah, pretty much. Yeah. If I want to go, I can go. Well, but that's not what I was thinking about going to Topolino's this morning, too. <laughs> Just I going to... Yeah, I think they modified it. Yeah, they had a Topolino's breakfast. Chris, like, do you just in, like invite you? I said, yeah. What? <laughs> how else am I gonna go? That's a good point. America's guest. Exactly. Hey, a lot of people pay for access. That's true. You know, you pay exactly. contribute to my Patreon, and I'll come out and hang out at the parks with you. All you want is to go. You pay. Your I own just way. want an opportunity to go. I pay my own way too. Yeah. yeah. Oh yeah. You know, looking for any handouts. All right, so you get in, you check in. How was that process besides the people not knowing what they're super doing? Super easy, super easy. There day. was nobody there. So this is the first one you've done in Disney World. You did the yes, ECA. Yeah. Yep, the first one was over there, and it, which was interesting because it was, like, hard ticketed. Like, we yeah. got stuff in the mail, like physical tickets to this thing. Oh, really? Yeah, to, to at, at California Adventure. Right, right, yeah. So I asked Ken, I said, did you get anything in the mail? He's like, no, was I supposed to? I'm like, I don't know. I said, we got stuff like literally like a week before we got on a plane to go to L.A. Hmm. And he's like, I think it's all on my Magic Band. It was all on the Magic Band, That which is weird because they still don't have that stuff over in California. No, it's very different. Yeah, they're, try- they're starting to like incorporate it a little bit, but it's yeah. very rare. Yeah, because I couldn't use it for my hotel room. I had to use right. the uh, cards. The phone or the card, yeah. Right. Um, but yeah, it was super, super easy. They just throw a little wristband on you and you're good to go. And is do the uh, like snack credits work the same way? Yeah, so they just give you, it's like a hard ticket. So they give you like almost like a pamphlet where you can just rip it off. Oh, okay, so that's not on the Magic Band. That's something. That's Correct, cool. yeah, that's okay. on the, uh, yep. So talk to me, uh, take me through what you guys did then. So we we just kind of went off to the side and we were talking for a while because we had never met. They were at Riviera when we were at Riviera. And I think that they were just, um, I think they were eating at Topolino's that night. We were going to try to figure out a way to meet. And we had been at Epcot and they were just getting ready to go back to the hotel. So it didn't work out. So this was the first time we ever met. So we were just talking. Yeah. His, his wife. His wife is a foodie. She okay. loves good food. He is a simpleton, which he's which he told me. He said he's a vegetarian, but he I don't doesn't... think simpleton is the word you're looking for. That means okay, a so he's a person. Oh, that's a, yeah, that's right. No, I'm sorry, Ken. You're not a simpleton. He just <laughs> he likes very simple food. He's basic, yeah. Yes. So this messed me up. So we're talking. They went to Victorian Alberts. Oh, and he's a and vegetarian? He's a vegetarian. So oh. The, you that know, they do me. the pre-call. They like they ask Kristen, yeah. "Is there anything that you don't?" He goes, "She's like, no, he'll eat anything, but he he he's not gonna like the caviar." He mentioned that he'd rather have something other than caviar. Like he'll try it, but he just that's not his thing. So they yeah. they did something to accommodate me. So he said he got nachos. He <laughs> said, and they weren't like regular nachos. He no, said like they were like all these imported cheeses from all around the world. I'm like. And then he said, like, he got these French fries. He said, but they were, like, the best fries he's ever had. And I'm scratching my head. I'm like, holy cow. Like, could you imagine now doing V and A, like, in a simple way, like, having the best Wagyu burger, having the best French fries, having the best. That's interesting. It's interesting because I've never heard or thought about that. Have you? No. And And also, you know how me, like, with my... ADD. Now I'm thinking, oh, what could I could I, what could I? doing like a vegetarian version of it too? But be like, blow me away without meat, and I bet they would do it. Exactly, like everything would be amazing. Yeah, because there's a ton of it. vegans, and I'm sure that their vegan options are amazing. And vegetarian's a little easier because you can have dairy. Yeah. Right. Correct. Yeah. yeah. Like hence the nachos. Right. Like I've got to know what these nachos taste like, don't you? Yeah, you know they're making like the tortilla chips in house and right like, fresh and everything. Yeah, that's wild. I didn't. Think it's so that. wild. I never would have thought of it. Like, even As you're going to Victoria, Albert, like eating so cool. dirty nachos with your hands. 
Yeah. Oh, yeah. Like you got like the napkin, like just tucked <laughs> out and it's just full of green. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> now, is the wife vegetarian as well or no? No, no, no. no. Okay. She laughs. No, she's like, she's like, I love a good steak. I think That's she said funny. that she she almost had steak every night of that trip. Nice. Of this recent trip. Yeah. That's cool. Yeah. I would never thought of the Victorian Alberts thing. That actually no. is interesting, though. And that could be a selling point when you say how Doc wouldn't enjoy it. You, I mean, they could probably put together some good stuff. Yeah, just like imagine if you like, I just like Italian. Like if they did a chicken palm. Yeah, because it'd probably be the best. Like blow you. Yeah, they probably get like this stupid chicken, like that you can't (laughs) get anywhere. They source it. So let me before you get too Uh far into it. Yeah, you said it starts at. What six o'clock when the park closes? Yeah, so technically, Moonlight Magic starts one hour after park close. So park closes at six, and Moonlight Magic starts at seven. Yeah, you can get in earlier. Seven to ten, but you could get in early. That's correct. Okay, so seven to ten is like the window where everyone else is technically should be gone at that point. You got it. Yep. Okay. And you guys were there quarter of six or whatever. So Mm -hmm. what'd you end up doing in that like buffer hour? Well, I assume that's before like the snacks are free for all and all that stuff. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Um, and that's when you were talking, just kind of catching yeah, up. Yeah, we were talking right at the right at like as, as you're walking in, like where all the trees are and it's yeah, shaded and dark. Um, well, we did what what foodies would do is we we went out and searched for food. There you go. So we went over to Satuli Canteen. Mm-hmm. Not your they had place. Not my favorite place, but I had not eaten because I was going to be in the car earlier, so I had not eaten, and I was starving. Oh, okay. Yeah. I said, I'm just going to do something out of pocket, so I went over and got one of their protein bowls, and I'll tell you, it was good. They had like a a braised beef and chicken. It was like a combination, and then you hmm. got to pick your bean, pick your rice, and pick your topping, and it was fantastic. So that's a little different than what it used to be then. The protein. Yeah, like they still had like your standard. They had three different types of bowls, but it was almost like a chipotle. Yeah, it was good. You, know, you pick your protein, you pick your beans, you pick your rice, you pick your uh, your topping. It was really good. Nice. And I don't mind one of the truly, snack credits, just... They had like some type of, I want to say like a cheesecake or a chocolatey cheesecake. Hmm. You did your snack credit for that? No, she did. That's what. Oh, okay. When we were looking at the different menus, I said, I think this would be a good use of my first. So I said, well, I'm starving anyway, so I'm just going to go in there and just pay out of pocket and get myself. So what do you get? Two snacks? You get three snacks. Per person. So you guys had nine snacks between you. Correct. That's pretty good. Yeah. And it's basically like any snack credit that you would have on the dining plan. No, it was disappointing. It was disappointing. Oh, really? I, yeah, I, I put out a YouTube video that has me um, get in a little more in depth, but it has me walking around. You know what? I did actually. I started watching that, but I knew we were going to talk about it, so I didn't want to watch yeah. it too much. But if you want to check it out, go to our YouTube page, youtube.com slash at WDWBTG. Check out Mike's. Those are like your instant thoughts on the movie. Yes. Magic. Yeah. Just live and raw as it's happening. Some footage, yeah. But it was it, it was disappointing because you basically you got whatever they had. Yeah. So I could get like a soda, a water, a a bag of chips, like one of those little bag of Doritos. Oh, I thought those were all like they just hand them out like the ice cream bars or whatever. Nope. Because like the ice cream bars, you could take what you, you can want, get right? those for free. Yep. Oh, and I thought like the sodas were like that, too. No. Nope. Oh, all right. No, nope, I'd, I'd use a credit for a fountain soda. I thought they had like bottles of soda with the ice cream bars that you could just grab. They may have had them in in one of the where the free ice cream was, but I didn't see anything. Okay, I could be also wrong. That's just what I had heard. I've I've, I've never been to one, so I don't know. Interesting. And it it's completely different from what it was at D- Disney California Adventure because there we had a ten dollar. It was worth ten dollars. Now, I wonder, do you think it's more like free for all in California because they're not used to it as much? It's like a there's less DVC out there. It's a newer concept. And they I don't I don't know, because it's costing the same amount. So DVC is paying for this. True. So it's coming out of their marketing budget. 
Yeah. But what we didn't realize at the time when we were in California is they would actually ring it up on the cash register. So we would give them the ticket yeah. and like a bow bun would be 935. And then they put in the ticket. That makes sense. But so they get reimbursed probably. Yeah. Or they're they trying yeah. to keep track or whatever. But the other thing that was nice was that you could pay over. We found out at the end of the night when it was too late, but you could, she could have gotten a beer flight that was $14 and paid oh, and just $4 paid the out of pocket. Yes. Yeah. Interesting. Yep. Yep. We so found those that. are basically just $10 gift cards. Then. Yeah, they are, which is fantastic. Right. Because you have way more flexibility. Yeah, because you could even used it for your protein bowl and just paid like the extra $8 or whatever. You're right. Yep. Yeah. Yep. So it was way more flexible. Where here you get a popcorn, you just hand them one of your vouchers. Mm. So the, the options are a lot less. You couldn't go to like Flame Very Tree limited. and get French fries with the snack credit. I think one of the vendors did have French fries, but the line was, I'm Very like, I'd, I'd rather just go somewhere and pay the $5. Like it was insane. Oh, so not every place was even an option. Correct. The snack credit. Correct. I yep. got you. That's interesting. Yeah, it's like they were totally mainly different. like the little street carts that you see, you know, that serves a coffee or yep, I know what you're you can just about. get the bottle water or bottle soda. They have like the umbrella and that's a, yeah. 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 Hmm. So that part was a little disappointing. Right? That was disappointing. Did you end up using all three of your credits? I did. I did. I actually I got a fountain soda and then I said, well, I got to use it because in California, everything was sold out. So okay. we ended up bringing a snack credit home. So I just said, you know what? I'll just get a Dasani bottle of water and just store it in the refrigerator. Right. Yeah. Might as well use it instead You're of right. throwing a waste. Yeah, that's pretty crazy. I thought they I thought they gave you drinks and ice cream at the Moonlight Magic. But maybe I'm thinking of something else. Maybe that's the I'm, after hours. I party. know in California they did. That might be the after hours I'm thinking of. You know how you could pay like the hard ticket yeah. after hour thing? That yeah. might be the one that has the drinks that are included anyway so how were the uh how were the crowds was it did it feel like dead yeah it was awesome yeah okay it, it was awesome one one thing before we we did get like carnival tickets so we could have played a couple games oh at like dino land or whatever. yeah and we were, we went in there and and like the basketball line was just it was going to be 30 minutes minimum Oh, just because everyone had a free Because everyone had the tickets. Yep. Yeah. And I'm like, yeah, I don't really care. And, you know, for just for a chance to win a oh, stuffed right. animal that I'm not going to even display in the Disney room wasn't worth our time. So I ate right. those. Those are, those are here at the house. But yeah. I thought that was nice that they offered that. I mean, it was, if, you know, with the kids, it would be fun if each kid could play a game and you don't have to pay out of pocket. Right. Yeah, absolutely. Um, but yeah, the crowd, it was awesome. Yeah, I mean, we cool. did, we did flight of passage, and it was it was essentially a walk on. Like you got up to where you start seeing people, like right before you go into like the room, like where you view it, yeah. you know. So like instead of two hours, it was like twenty minutes because with the pre show and all that stuff. Yeah, with the pre show, you know, you you stand. Yeah, that's where it got backed up a little bit, but it was essentially a walk on. I timed it; it was fifteen minutes. That's nice. Navi was 10. It was awesome. And then it also, on the rare occasion where it actually got dark in Animal Kingdom, and you probably were able to right. see like the, the nighttime of Pandora, which is nice. Right. Yeah, it was beautiful. And I mean, there's, there's a, I'm doing a video walking out of Pandora, and yeah. you can't see my face. So, you know, there's another thing that I need to buy that I don't really need to have is a little flashlight that I can put on my Sony ZV-E10. Yeah, you definitely need that. You couldn't see my face. It's, I mean, which is good, probably. Probably it's yeah, the best thing if I don't put a, a light on We'll probably on get it. better numbers on this. Sort of thing. <laughs> it's so dumb. Um, you weren't ready for that, were you? <laughs> no, I wasn't. That, that threw me <laughs> off my game a little bit. What uh, Was anything closed? I'm assuming the safari yeah, was Yes, a lot closed. of things were closed. Like I don't believe that they did any of the shows. I don't think the oh, Nemo and the um Oh Lion King, yeah. Lion King. Uh obviously the, the Safari they weren't doing, but they, they actually were doing the um 
Cali River uh, Rapids? Did, was that open? Yeah, Cali was open, and there was actually a sign that said we're open, and I kind of wanted to do that because how cool would that be to do at night? Yeah, never done it at night, that's for sure. Yeah. Yeah, there's not a ton of rides there, so you, right. you, you close a couple. Like, was the, I'm assuming just the train was closed, right? Going over. Yeah, I didn't even go. I I walked as far back as, like, Everest, but I wasn't anywhere near. And all the trails closed. Yeah, yep. You can't go on those, so. But they also do a lot of, like, character meet and greets, right? Sure. This, like, with rare characters. I know yeah, a lot I think of people. Yeah, I posted that on social. Place. Yeah. I actually got a picture with uh, Scrooge McDuck. That's a good one. I mean, yeah. come on, when you well, you don't see him out. No. Were there a lot of other ones around that you like pass by? Or... Yeah, there were quite. Yeah, there were quite a few. There were a lot of characters out there. I'll tell you what, the dance parties were killer. Oh yeah, you love. They the were party. killer. Yeah, with the characters and everything. Yeah, and like they had a DJ, and like there there, there was uh you know, they did a lot of like haunted mansion stuff and just all oh, unique cool. things that you never see. Yeah. That's cool. Yeah. What else uh did you do? Everest? Uh we did. The three of us did Everest. That was one of the first things that we did. Nice. Is there any rides that you didn't get to or didn't um like dinosaur, not really i wanted to do lion king when i first got there before the moonlight magic and i had just oh. missed it oh yeah, yeah so that's why i decided to go do the safari because lion king's one of those like i'll go a year or two without doing it and i'm like you know what we haven't done lion king in a while let's do it and you sit there and you're like god i forget how great this show is it's so good i was it's watching so a good. i was watching a video with uh Eugenia jr because she's never been to it Oh really? Because it was closed last time we went. I think they were doing the re- finishing up the refurb, and then the first time she was too young. I don't think she went on it, so she's excited to to check it out. So it's been a while for me. I mean, yeah, the last time I went, Eugenia Senior was just a baby, so it's been like seven, eight years since I've been on that one. Oh wow, that's going. Yeah, that's quite a bit. Yeah, so we'll definitely do that. That's high on the priority list. What about um? I think I said I don't know if you heard me. Was dinosaur open? I th- think so. Yes. So obviously you didn't go on that. Didn't do that. No. There's not much on that side when things start. Not closing. anymore. Right. So I get most of it was probably like the Harambe area was probably oh. where the dance party was, right? It was actually at the, over by the entrance of uh, Dinoland. Oh, okay, over there. Yep. Yeah, it was on that side. Gotcha. Yeah, you know, like I think they have like a stage over there where they have yep. performers from time to time. Yep, like, I know exactly. Dream barbecue about. and yeah, yeah, it's a good little area there. But what what was great was when you asked about the crowds. There, there's nobody there. It is, I'd imagine, it's not like these stupid oversold hard ticketed events that we both you me new phil jr we all said no way right and what's great okay so they're not making any money off it so they don't oversell it so they don't they're not selling it right they still cap it though so they they do, it sells they, do out. they do oh it does it does sell out so they do cap it uh i don't know what the number is but it was it was like it, it's just it's it's fantastic. I love Do you it. You think they they cap it and people just claim it and then they don't always go, or is it like I think there's a lot of people. Yeah, I think there's a lot of people who don't go. I, I mean, really I was just I was just wondering if it like gets capped at a purposely low number, or if a lot of people claim a ticket and then don't. You know, they probably it. figure. You know, like any any business, they probably know that there's thirty to forty percent who don't go. Whatever so if they yeah. if they if they want capacity at six, they might sell ten, right? Or offer ten. I I don't know that for sure, but that would sound logical. Yeah, there's some number, and they know it. Yeah, right. That's interesting, because for something like that, a free event or quote unquote free, right? Like, why not? Like, what's the reasoning for keeping it so low? I wonder. 
maybe they want it to be a special intimate event. I mean, what could, I mean, if you, if you're going to have capacity, then what the hell good is it? So you get to go to an after hour event where there's 35,000 people in the park. Well, there would never be that many because DVC doesn't have, but like to shut out people that want to go when it's, there's nobody there seems right to be too. Yeah. I mean, there were people, it, it was, it was comfortable. It was like a very slow park day or like very how, low attendance park day. I guess you might not know because you only did it once, but like did flight of passage get to an hour or do they even post wait times at that point? Yeah, they post wait times and it was 15 when we went on it. I know it didn't, never got because the other great thing, there's no lightning lightning lane. Yeah. And yeah, Genie that, Plus. Yeah, that that helps for sure. Because you would think at Animal Kingdom, there's literally what five rides you could do. Yeah, right. you've got the two the two the and two Pandora. Pandora. The Safari's out, but you got the Kali, you got Everest and Dinosaur, let's say. Yeah. Is open. So you got five. Maybe the other like swirling dinosaur one, the, the triceratops spin was probably going. Or whatever that one's called. Yeah, Triceratops. Yeah, I think you're right. Yeah, I think that's it. Um so six, I guess. Uh, and to have nobody waiting for flight of passage means that there was nobody there. Nobody. How long was the wait to meet Scrooge McDuck? That couldn't have been too long. It, uh, it, 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 I don't, I don't know if you can say it's a walk on for a character meet and greet, but it was a walk on. Because you like, wouldn't have waited if no, there were three people waiting. You wouldn't have right. waited probably. Yeah, there was yeah. like literally no like I didn't even know where the line was. Like I had to ask somebody. Yeah, because it was like uh, yeah. like there was like. A mom with her kid, and I'm like, "Where's the way? Oh, just right behind him." I'm like, "Okay." Yeah, <laughs> yeah that's crazy. Because you know, you see people always online, like in the in the DVC Facebook groups, they're always complaining that they're, oh, yeah. they're out of Moonlight Magic. Yep. And then you give this report. I wonder if the Animal Kingdom one though is less popular. I'm sure it's one of the least populars. Just because there's less rides, and then everything when it's right. dark, you can't be like you don't enjoy the park as much in the dark for the ambiance and everything. Right. Like Magic Kingdom, obviously, there's a million rides. Same, even Epcot has a bunch. It's interesting and though. They don't even have one at Magic Kingdom. I was gonna say I didn't even know if they did them there. Nope. Do they do them at the water parks too? Uh, they do Typhoon Lagoon. That's cool. That'd be a cool one. Yeah, they actually got one coming up, and I was excited because it's right around when you're going to be here. Oh, in July? Yeah, but it's a week after I'm there. You guys might actually still be there because I'm like, that would be a perfect one if, like, if there was any way I could get that. Yeah. Then again, I'd have to throw you on the reservation because the way it works, we didn't yeah. really get into this at the beginning, but if you if you have a reservation – You'll get an email about a week or so prior to when you can sign up. Yeah, you have priority if you're staying on property during the event. Right. So, like, you'll get a link. And then you just click that link, and that's how you register. So, it's just like a run Disney event. It'll say you what, tell you what number you are in queue. But you can only get the amount of tickets of people staying in your room. Of people staying in your room with a maximum of five. Right, because that's the most. Even if you have like a three bedroom villa, you can only get five people. I think I think the max is five. That seems crazy to me. I'm sure you're right because you've looked at it. Like with a studio, five makes sense. You can't have six people in a studio, so that. But I don't know if I paid the points for a three bedroom and they don't let me take the eight people I'm with or something. I'd be kind of. That's kind of jack. I think yeah. there's probably ways around it. Maybe. I guess that's not something I'll have to worry about. So, yeah, but eventually it probably might happen. Like when the two of us are going at the same time, right? I'm saying, well, I don't even have the blue card, so it doesn't affect right, me. Right, but I'm saying, like, if I could get you in. Oh, right, yeah. And would that mess it up if we're both on the same? Oh, but you yeah, don't have don't... to have my name on it. You could just put dummy names on there, right? It doesn't actually go to a specific. Yeah, because person. he did not. Yeah, because he got the right. Re... Yeah, you're right. I could just put. Plus three. Right, because you didn't... It's guest not like one, you were on two, his reservation. Three. I wasn't on his reservation, but he made them for the kids. Yeah. That's how he had the extra ticket. Right. 
Yeah, that makes sense. That makes total sense. So the question is, for you driving up and being close, not staying, not using points, obviously it was worth it. Yes. For them, they I don't I don't want to speak for Ken and his family, but they didn't plan their trip around that time because there was a moonlight magic going on. It just that is out. correct. So for them it makes sense. Totally worth it. That they is use correct. it or they don't, whatever. Is it worth it for you, in your opinion? if you know one's coming up to use points to book a room to try to nab a moonlight magic no no No. now do you think it's just because it was animal kingdom and maybe if you did an epcot one you might have a different feeling doing like guardians of the galaxy and living with the land and sort like more attractions like like, you don't even care about the attractions that much i don't really know um this is very this is very cultish in the DVC community, like you see people and they, they get 20 people together to go to these things. Oh, so they're all like booking rooms for it. And yeah, they're just all, uh, and I guess maybe if like you were local and Phil was local and we had a bunch of like Schaefer and we had a bunch of local people and there was somehow where we could get 20 people. I yeah, think we all, we all got in early and we got dinner together and then did moonlight magic. Or something. Yeah. Like, I think yeah. that would be a blast. Yeah, I can see that. Um, but like I could see myself trying because you can book a room and then if you can't get in, you can cancel it. That's true. Because you're typically this this is typically 30 days before, so you're not going to be in that waiting period. Oh, so it's past the past the 30 days. Look, more than yeah, I believe I think yeah. So I think if you don't get in, you could cancel your room. I may be wrong. Yeah, that's interesting. You have to look into it. I'm curious how that how that works. And they do like one a month almost now. They said that they're going to be increasing those. They only do one on the West Coast, so they don't do right. Disneyland and they don't do Magic Kingdom here. Um, yeah, that, that and there's only sense. one out on the West Coast, so and it was simple for me to get in. Like when I got on and I saw what number I was, I'm like, I'm definitely getting into this thing. Yeah. And, and did I'm, that feel dead too? You said that was more of a cluster over there though, because they seemed disorganized, like getting in and everything. Yeah, it was it was more because I don't think they're used to it. Like it That's was I mean, yeah. seamless in Orlando. Gotcha. Where it is still kind of felt new in Anaheim. I actually think I'd enjoy a Hollywood Studios one. Yeah, because that's not your place. That's not my place, but being able to like bang out Tower of Terror, Rock and yeah. Roller Coaster. I think that like... would be fun. And you know that they're throwing a party. Yeah. They're throwing a party over there. And if you're staying, you can get a little loose, have some beers or whatever as you're going around. Sure. Yeah. Like if you're over at one of those Crescent Lake resorts, yeah, no doubt. Yeah. That'd be a good one. No, would this be something you would be interested in? I think I already know the answer. Uh, yeah, of course. If I was, I don't think I'd plan a trip around it, but if it worked out, I would definitely try to get it. Well, like, if there was there. something the two days that I'm staying when you guys are there, and I said, you want me to try it? You would say, yeah, let's do it. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Like, especially imagine Epcot. We'd, we'd just both walk over there. Walk over there, yeah. Yeah, that would be really cool. Now, you can only do a certain amount, right? Is it one per year? I don't. Yeah, I think you're right. Or two per year, or one per quarter. I know there's a limit. To or it. you only allowed one per park. Oh, per park per year. I think that might be what it was. Because you can't go to all of them Mm-mm. if you're the main person on the reservation, I guess. It's interesting. I still don't know what the drawback would be for them to let in like 20 percent more people in though if it was that if it was as dead as you're saying yeah yeah you know what i mean just to make people happier the dvc people like because it's funny i was reading by the pool tonight about different you know of course you had like there was a question about moonlight magic yeah and somebody of of course doesn't answer the question like oh why would you ever buy a direct contract you could just buy an a resale contract and just go to a hard party event and save money but that wasn't a question number one 
Number two, this is way better than the hard ticketed event because we all said that it was terrible with the crowd sizes. Now, I will say from what I've heard and seen online, the after hours parties are worth it. And they have one at Typhoon Lagoon, which I, I'd consider because the numbers is. Well, that one's not even that expensive. Bucks. Yeah, that one's. But like you could do the after hours party Magic Kingdom. I think it's like two hundred dollars, but they sell it like a Moonlight Magic. There's only like, I think under ten thousand people or something. Isn't that what the Christmas party costs? Yeah, but that's what I'm saying. So it's the same price as like right. the Christmas party, but this one is basically just to ride rides. There's no other stuff. And that's, again, it's like three hours or four hours. Yeah, that's just hard because I've been on the rides a million times. I'll be honest. I, I like the parties. I love it. I love watching the dance parties because, I mean, they, they are rocking. There's a ton of people, and you see the kids with the moms, and they have great music, great DJs. It's The dance parties are killer. Yeah. Yeah, those are fun. It's just tough to justify spending two hundred bucks on a Christmas party ticket to watch the, the dance party for forty. Oh years. yeah, yeah, we're done with that. I'm talking about the Moonlight Magic one. Moonlight, yes, yeah, so. yeah, that was that, that's fantastic. Yeah, I don't know. It's tough. Uh, I don't think it's it's enough. Like that's not enough of a perk, especially for me. To say like getting direct would make more sense because the odds that I'm there during a Moonlight Magic is pretty low. And the odds that you get one, yeah, because it's hard for locals who can just run up there. So yeah, I completely agree. Um, so that doesn't make a lot of sense on my end, but yeah, if I had the opportunity to go, I would absolutely do it. I just think it's one of many good benefits. I think there's a lot of good benefits to having a direct contract because I've used them. I've used Top of the World. Yeah. I've stayed at Riviera. I've stayed at Disneyland. This is all 15 months into me buying my first contract. Right. And you're the perfect person for a direct. Yes. Because you're, you're local and you're going to use the perk. And I'm going to, yeah, a lot of people aren't, aren't going to go to Top of the World. You, I mean, you'll go if if I'm around and, and you know, you're not there with the family. Yeah, I probably and unless I was playing golf and I'm like, yeah, let's go get some appetizers and then. Yeah, unless like we were staying at Contemporary, at Contemporary. I probably wouldn't go with just the four of us, like my family. We right. Because it's not like the girls don't want to go to a lounge. Like, I mean, I guess to watch the fireworks. It's to pretty, watch the fireworks, that's... they have they have some great appetizers, so it would yeah. it would actually be a decent place for. But I'm with you. It's an afterthought. Right. And like the Epcot Lounge, don't get me wrong, that'd be nice, but that's not enough to sell me on it for me. No, that was a night. That's a nice little break spot, but you can take a break anywhere. Now the AP discounts are nice. The what? The AP discount is nice. Yeah, as a non-local, that's like the biggest one that hurts me because that would that would make it a lot easier to swallow like doing the ap that's a lot especially having to pay it all at once too i can't pay it monthly like you can yeah right yeah so you gotta fork out like five grand or whatever yeah exactly all at one shot five that's grand a, a year that's a that's a golf membership somewhere yeah absolutely so i don't know and we still only go once so it's it's like barely break even but with the discount it would make sense because you can overlap it Kind of yeah, if you, so if you did that, because that's what Ken does. He does what Schaefer always did. Did he? He kind of staggers his his you trip. Go, so he'll do the two and yeah. an eleven month period. Right, exactly. So yeah. that's what we would do if we were going to do that. But even with doing that without the discount, it's not worth it. You don't say like, I was yeah, right. No, I see what you're saying. Yeah. Well, especially so. too, like if you're coming down, what do you? What, what's your July trip? Are you down here for eight days or? Nine, uh, nine nights. All right, so you're here for nine, nine, ten, nine. Yeah, ten days, nine nights. So I mean, you could get away with. What are you thinking? Like six, six park, four off parks. Yeah, I mean, five I was and five, gonna... even. No, I was probably gonna do a seven. Okay, I mean at the least... price difference, like we've discussed, is not. But then at that point, I'm thinking because we're so close. 
why not just do a 10? And then if we want to just hop into Epcot for 20 minutes, I, I completely agree. Cause like the difference between a seven day park hopper and a 10 day park hopper is only like a hundred and something bucks a person. Yeah. Then I would, then I would max it. So that's what I'm thinking. But you then... st- but you'll still treat it as, as resort days. Oh Yeah. Yeah, like you just, might go to like like you might go to the park like Epcot for two hours and then like if we're in the pool at seven o'clock day. at night and uh, and the girls say they want to go watch the fireworks we'll just go get changed and we'll go into Epcot and check out the fireworks right exactly you know being so close so we'll see and even like the first day when we show up like our flight's super early and if they we get to Wilderness Lodge and they just want to relax we won't go but if they decide. Like, if our room's not ready for a while and they want to go over to Magic Kingdom, all right, we'll just go take the boat and we'll just go over to Magic Kingdom and right, yeah. hang out there for a little bit. Yeah, I think that's so the thing. It just it just gets to the price point where it doesn't make sense not to. Just to yeah. have the flexibility and freedom to jump in and out whenever you want. Right. I, I agree with that. What other thoughts do you have on the Moonlight Magic? Anything else? No, not really. They're just, they're a lot of fun. They're a lot yeah. of fun. You got to try to, not you in particular, but just people in general. Got Just try to get to one. Yeah, if you have the opportunity, you should definitely do it. Yeah, because like you said, it literally doesn't cost you anything. Right. You have to be, if you want to be sure to get it, you have to be staying on property. Yeah, it very rarely opens up to just regular DVC members. Right. Um. On for, uh, the snack thing's kind of a bummer. And you said there were weasels taking advantage of the ice cream bars. You think that'll be... That's something? what Ken was saying, because we he, we were talking about, you know, our boycott, our band yeah. show a couple weeks yeah, ago. Yeah. He said he was talking to a cast member, like, two days later. He was back at Animal Kingdom, and he was working in the Starbucks where they were giving away the free ice cream bars. He said they weren't just, you know, double fist and triple fist, and he said they, they brought, like, little mini coolers. And loaded oh, take, their coolers up. And to like take them back to the room and stuff. Can you imagine that? Like I could see like taking two because you don't want to go back and wait in line or something. If like that's fine. Want... Right. Yeah. Or your wife's out your wife's in the bathroom and like I'll grab you one. No, but I'm even saying like if if I was at that with the girls and they said, Could we each have two? I'd be like, All right, yeah, whatever, take two and just eat them if you want to yeah, have two right that's, now. That's plausible. I'm just saying yeah. to, to load up a cooler to get 70 of them. That's embarrassing, isn't it? <laughs> I don't. Yeah, I wouldn't do that. It's one thing, like the cookies at the Christmas party. Even that, like when I would go up and get cookies, for, there was what eight of us. Yeah, like when we were like when we were watching the parade and you grab like ten of them or whatever. Big yeah, deal. To, like, like the size of your nose to begin with. Yeah, I went to like three different spots and I had to ask for like ten cookies at each spot because people wanted to try all the different ones. But at least they were one for each person. It wasn't like I was taking them home. Right, you weren't putting them in your backpack. No, that's that's uh, man, that's but like he said, I think he said it on Facebook. He said that's going to get them taken away. People, of course, that stuff. that's what that's why everything gets taken away because people take advantage of it. They do. And I bet they had free drinks in the past and people probably did that. They probably loaded up 30 Coca-Cola bottles, threw them in their in their backpack and took them back to the room. And like, all right, we're not doing that anymore. Now you got to use your snack credit for a Coke. It's unbelievable. Yeah. It's not surprising, though, is it? It really isn't. You know, we, before we sign off, we got a couple yeah. minutes. We When we did our band show. Yeah. So there's a couple ones. And, and Ken brought up one. And I one of, my, one of my big ones was, you know, the people who leave the sodas in the queues? Oh, yeah, yeah. When there's a garbage can every five, every five feet. And they just put it on the ground. And they just put it on the ground or it's like on a railing. Yeah. yeah. Or like when you walk through that gorgeous queue at Peter Pan's flight and there'll be like a, a so like a peanut butter, like a peanut butter wrapper. Yeah. Or a popcorn wrapper rather like next to Wendy on the bed. Like that, that, you know, kind of detracts from that whole queue. Wouldn't you say? A little bit. Yeah. I would just say. A, I mean, not a ton, but just a <laughs> bit. Just a little bit. And no, then, you're right. It, it's it just can disrespectful hate. because there is a, there's, There's a trash a can bin. every two feet. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like you're on Thunder Mountain and like as you're weaving through the lines, like there's just like a popcorn box like wedged in between the railings. Yeah. 
<laughs> and you could probably see the trash can from where, right. you, where the popcorn it, it just box fascinates is. me how lazy and slobby people are. Yeah. And speaking, speaking about slobs, Ken thinks, do we ban uh, the DVC members who leave like the half drank? I'm okay with milk? that. Yeah, I'm fine with that. We, they have to go lifetime ban, right? Yeah. And the points go right to us. Oh, is that what they gets transferred to back to us, huh? Well, I mean, if they're banned, where do their points go? Well, the Not thing is, is, you can't be trespassed from your home resort. Remember, we read about a <laughs> there was like a fist fight at Beach Club. Yeah, and that's you got right. trespassed, but not at the Beach Club. Yeah, you can only stay there. Yeah, I mean, it's one thing. Like, if you if you were staying, like, let's say your first day was my last day, and I had an extra eight beers and like a loaf of bread that I didn't open, and I brought it to you like that's right. different i'm not gonna leave it anywhere i don't know like yeah like i'm all for not wasting food sure well but like no. like we said you know you got to be careful with the booze because like i told ken i said your 10 year old boys aren't going to be grabbing a, a vodka bottle and, and hiding in the staircases i'm like but some 18 year old kid who's like you know with his family and it's maybe his last vacation, and he's embarrassed hanging out with his parents when he's 18 years old, and he sees a six pack hanging out. Yeah, you might just grab it. I might go. grab that and go put it in the woods over, you know, over near the pool and and yeah. drink those while we're doing like our little family <laughs> pool day. But you know the people who will legit like, okay, I got it, I bought a case of water, I still have 20, they're sealed. Yeah. Okay, if you're arriving, that might be nice to be able to have bottled water and throw it in your refrigerator right. but when you have a peanut butter jar that's open that's open and you're just too lazy to dispose of it then you're a slob and you need to be trespassed i agree with that yeah, yeah. any open food a, a nearly new box of cheese it's like somebody like grubby hands in there grabbing Put their the fingers in there. Like, you know they pick their nose and they well, like, share other cheeses and the cheese it's i'll share it with my family hell i'd even if you said you had a half-eaten box of Cheez-Its and you were leaving, do I want it? I would take it because I yeah. know you and I know Susie. But like, I'm not going to grab it from the hallway, <laughs> <laughs> right? You're walking down that that marathon. At, oh, uh, Animal Kingdom. Animal Kingdom. Yeah. yeah, Animal Kingdom Lodge. You've and already a, done seven miles. You're going to grab these Cheez-Its. I see a good. bag of Oreos that has like three <laughs> Oreos. In. Maybe. Maybe Oreos. I do like Oreos. I might think about uh, them. They're just stale and like you're biting in, you're chipping your teeth. <laughs> like, hmm, uh, I saved it was free. Yeah. Yeah, that's... <laughs> I like that. Ban those people. If yeah, and I think there's more. I think we're hearing about more and more. Yeah. There's Ways to ban people. It. People want less people. <laughs> that's funny I'm interested about the babysitter thing they take advantage of that every time they go huh yeah yeah so it's I I'll have to ask them um, yeah because they, out, the, the so they like back in the day back years and years ago they like you could call the front desk and like they almost had them on hand right now it's like outsourced right so they outsource them but they are obviously completely vetted yeah and I asked him, and he said, like, they can do certain activities. They can't be near water, which makes sense. Yeah. Uh, yeah, but he he said he does it, you know, a couple times on a trip. Hmm. That's interesting. And he said he's had great experiences, so. That's good. It's kind of like that uh, kids' lounge on the cruises they talk about. Yeah, oh, I've heard some great things about that. I mean, Zach had pr high praises, didn't he? Yeah, absolutely, last week's episode. What else? Anything else uh, you want to add here? Should we just bring it home? Yeah, we can bring it home. All right. Well, you know where you can find us. We talked about our YouTube page, youtube.com slash at WDWBTG. Check out our latest video, including all our podcast episodes going forward will be available on our YouTube page. Your Moonlight Magic review is up there. What else do you have uh, recently have you put up there? I'm trying to remember. Uh, what was that? I had that little boat cruise on Crescent Lake over to That's Hollywood right. Studios. Yep. So those kind of videos, there's room reviews, restaurant reviews, transportation stuff. It's all good stuff up there. So check it out at WDWBTG on YouTube, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, TikTok at WDWBTG. 
Our Facebook group is the WDW Beyond the Gates podcast family. Join us over there. Subscribe wherever you download podcasts. Leave us reviews. WDWBTG.com. You can uh, email us info at WDWBTG.com. Mike at WDWBTG.com and Gary at WDWBTG.com. Anything else you'd like me to add here, Pards? Uh, that's a negative, Pards. I think I got it all. All right, that's going to do it for our episode number 526 of the WDW Beyond the Gates podcast. For my co-host, Mike, my name is Gary. Thanks so much for listening, and we'll talk to you again next week. Now it's time to say goodbye to all our company. M-I-C. See you real soon. K-E-Y Why? Because we like you. M-O-Y